with that kid. going to ask the old man where he took Fatty, but then he decided he didn't much care one way or the other. Kevin wanted to go to sleep, but the TV was keeping him awake, and he couldn't find the remote to turn it off, so he threw a beer bottle through the screen instead, since it was a whole lot easier than getting up. Then Kevin drank from a bottle full of cigarette butts and stuff he picked off the carpet. Then Kevin realized that the bottle he threw at the TV was the full one, and he had to get up anyway, which was pretty ironic. But Kevin didn't know that because he didn't know what the word ironic meant, and probably never would. Even though it was the middle of the night, Kevin couldn't fall asleep, mostly because he'd spent the last four days lying on the couch in a drunken haze, only coming out of it long enough to have a few smokes. Jesus, my fucking head! Hey, Poisey, give me the smoke! Ain't no pussy in here, love! Who the hell are you? My name's Lucy! How the hell did I get here? They brought you in last night. You were passed out drunk through the whole thing. They didn't strip switch me, did they? No. Oh, good. I hate to think I slept through some good action, you know? So, uh, what did I do? You don't even know why they arrested you? I've been on a four-day bender with my kid. I don't know what the fuck I done or who I done it with, but I could have sworn I made it home before I passed out. Ah, well, live and loin. Hey, you got any smokes? No. Then I'm going back to sleep so I don't miss it as much. Wake me up when I get paroled. All prisoners out for head count. Tomlinson, Morgan, Lupe, Goldberg, Spencer, Spencer! Shut up, fuck! I'm trying to sleep! Get your sorry ass out here, convict. Ah, blow me! It was Tuesday morning, and Kevin had been unconscious from food poisoning for two whole days. Strangely, he felt better than he had in weeks, mostly because it was the first time in almost seven years that Kevin had gone two whole days without drinking or smoking, and his body was enjoying the break. But part of Kevin was sad, because looking at his dad lying face down in a drunken stupor, clutching an empty liquor bottle, made Kevin realize that he must have missed some good times while he was unconscious. <laughs> Kevin usually liked to spend his Tuesdays hanging around the arcade, bumming quarters and carving biblical prophecies into the bathroom walls with his homemade shank, but he'd been banned from the arcade for tilting one of the machines with a stolen prosthetic leg. Kevin was going to ask his imaginary friend Alan what to do, but Alan was busy having a three-way with the protagonist from Franz Kafka's The Trial and a stereotypical comic strip girl drawn by a lonely and socially awkward loser who idealized huge breasts and an abnormally thin waist. 
and it didn't look like they were going to be finished anytime soon. Kevin didn't much feel like doing his usual things anyway, so he figured he would break with tradition and go to school, if for no other reason than just to remind himself why he dropped out in the first place. Then Kevin figured he'd help himself to his old man's wallet and glue the unemployed bastard's head to the table. Kevin wanted to make sure the other kids waiting for the school bus knew he was cool, so he chugged his beer in one swallow. Then he decided to crush the can against his forehead. By the time Kevin got up, the bus was already driving away, so Kevin figured he'd just steal a car and drive to school. Even though Kevin hadn't been to school for over a year, most of the other kids still recognized him and knew enough to keep their distance. Kevin didn't know where his homeroom was, so he just picked a room at random. Because he didn't figure it mattered a lick anyway, since he didn't plan on doing much learning in the first place. Long time no see, moron. These are grade 10 students. You probably don't recognize any of them because they used to be two years behind you in school. You're still in grade 9, next door down on the right. <laughs> It isn't worth it, Billy. Just walk away. As I was saying, class, Shakespeare was the most preeminent writer of his time, and his work remains as valid today as when it was written. Yes, Charles. How come he wrote so funny? No, oh, he didn't write funny for his time. The English language is organic and has continued to evolve throughout history. Shakespeare wrote in the language of his time, and that language has evolved to the English language we use today. The fact that he is still as relevant today as he was in his time further proves that he is one of the most gifted and complex writers in the history of literature. <laughs> yes, Kevin. Kevin was confused, so he asked the teacher whose bright idea it was to try and get 12 and 13 year old kids interested in literature by making them start by reading history's most complex writer. And wouldn't it make a whole lot more sense to have the kids in class work towards understanding Shakespeare by first having a stronger understanding of proper grammar and narrative structure as it exists in today's English language. So when the time came to decipher Shakespeare's writing, they would have the adequate academic foundation required to appreciate the nuances the bard was trying to impart to the reader. Well, I mean, it's... You, you have a valid point, but... The school board makes us teach Shakespeare. I'm just following orders. Kevin told the teacher if that was the case, then the next time he saw the president of the school board, he could tell him to take a long, hard suck on Kevin E. Spencer's rod for him. Then he told the teacher that the Nuremberg defense for teaching Shakespeare made him nothing more than a spineless pawn, unable to think for himself, and that he and all the other teachers like him were a plague on the public education system. Then Kevin told him he stunk like an armpit full of hillbilly ass juice and said he was fucking off for a smoke. Kevin kinda liked the feeling of standing up to the teacher. And since he didn't plan on finishing high school anyway, he figured he'd spend the rest of the day going from classroom to classroom, questioning authority until they threw him out for good. But first things first, Kevin figured he'd go to the cafeteria and steal some food, since the only thing he'd eaten for the past three days was 14 food poisoned eggs. Get my client some clothes now. Who the fuck are you? I'm Miss Atkins, your court-appointed attorney. This is Mr. Higgins, the Crown Prosecutor. Any you asshole smoke? 
We don't allow smoking while in solitary confinement. Speaking of which, what exactly did my client do to warrant such barbaric treatment? She gave a little bit too much sass mouth to one of the guards. <laughs> my client is in solitary confinement because she spoke out of turn to a guard? No, she's in solitary because when the guard told her to stop giving him sass mouth, she hit him in the head with a toilet seat from her cell. I ain't a morning poison, so sue me. Listen, I want to meet with my client in private in a proper holding cell in 15 minutes, and she better be properly clothed and fed, or I'll have you, the warden, and the city in court quicker than you can say David Melgard. Yeah, and what about that cavity search? You conducted a cavity search? We did nothing of the sort. That's the fucking problem. I asked at least six times and them sons of bitches won't go near me. I got rights too, you know. For the last time, neither I nor anyone on my staff has any legal obligation to conduct a cavity search. Ain't them ignoring my basic needs some sort of violation of my constitutional rights? I don't think your desire to have strange men insert their gloved hands into your various... <laughs> Orifices constitutes a basic need as defined by the Charter of Human Rights and Freedoms. Use a woman too. Don't you never get that certain kind of itch? We'll discuss that later. I'm just going to go wash up. Bring me some fucking smokes when you come back. Oh, and hey, what the fuck did I do anyway? You haven't even been told what you've been charged with? Maybe I probably just weren't listening. The charges are break and enter, destruction of public property, public indecency, and grand theft auto. What did I do that was so indecent? According to the police report, you broke into a government welfare office, destroyed some furniture, set the files on fire, broke three computers, and defecated on the branch manager's desk. What the hell's that mean? That son of a bitch! The closer Kevin got to the food, the hungrier he became. Even though it was mostly just slop and cheap meals made from the stuff left over after they made hot dogs. The line was moving pretty slow, and Kevin thought that he was going to pass out from hunger before it was his turn. So he just took a tray of food from some kid walking past him. Then he took the kid's sunglasses and wallet and told him to go fuck himself. As Kevin made his way to his seat, the cafeteria fell silent. Go to hell, Spaz! your mouth, you pig! Kevin didn't much care for being talked to like that, so he told the kid to shut his pie hole before he took his fork and spread him open quicker than a five dollar whore, or his mother, which was pretty much the same thing as far as Kevin was concerned. Do you have any idea who I am, kid? Kevin thought about it for a minute, then he told the kid that as near as he could figure, he was the next person on his list of people to hit. Then to prove his point, Kevin popped him a real sweet one in the larynx. You're gonna pay for that, mark my words. One more time, just to make sure I've got it all straight. It wasn't me! Check my fat bastard of a husband's alibi. Breaking Anna, awesome shitting on the desk. That's his M.O. Why should I believe you? Check his fucking rap sheet. He was arrested for the same thing seven times last year. And once at a Dairy Queen. Why a Dairy Queen? Even he don't know what that one was all about. Sometimes he just gets to drinking and takes a notion. Even so, we would have to prove it, and you would have to testify against your husband in court. Are you prepared to do that? Why not? Hell, I testified against him for things he ain't even done. The way I sees it, Whatever it takes to get that fat, drunk prick out of my hair and into the joint for a few months is fine by me. 
I'll have to run some DNA tests on the feces your husband allegedly left behind. That's going to cost you some money. How much? Around $4,000. Just let me make a few calls. I'll get the money. Kevin didn't know it, but he'd taken the food from Billy Milligan. And Billy Milligan's older brother was a senior and the captain of the football team. And he was the biggest and toughest kid in the school and spent all his time in the gym lifting weights and eating steroids in a continuous cycle of validation of false ideals. That's him in the black ball cap. Wait here. Vengeance is mine, saith Billy Milligan. This is a non-smoking building, you little pussy. Kevin told Billy's brother that as far as he was concerned, there was no such thing as a non-smoking building. And just to prove his point, he decided to light another cigarette. First, I'm gonna kick your ass for disobeying me. Then I'm gonna kick your ass for stealing my brother's food. Kevin didn't much care for the idea of getting his ass kicked for any reason but he didn't figure he was big enough to do too much about it. And since his smoker's lungs pretty much ruled out running away, he decided to try and talk his way out of the beating by coherently expressing to the bully that no matter how big he was, he would eventually lose the fight to Kevin because he wasn't a violent sociopath and he didn't have the stomach to kill a man. What the fuck are you talking about, Shakespeare? Kevin was getting bored talking to the idiot jock and he was really itching for a smoke. So he figured he'd simplify things a little bit and told Billy's brother to fuck off or he'd destroy him in a violent frenzy of shame, embarrassment, and sweet, sweet rage. Is there a problem here, boys? This jerk stole my little brother's lunch. Is that true? Kevin told the teacher that the whole thing must have been a simple misunderstanding and that he would be willing to buy Billy Milligan a new lunch if he happened to give a sweet flying fuck whether or not the little crybaby died of starvation. But since he didn't care, then the whole lot of them could go screw themselves. Then Kevin stood up and told the teacher that he was fucking off outside for a smoke if he cared to tag along and waste any more of his time. The only place you're going is the principal's office, Spencer. This ain't over. <laughs> what fuck? Jeez, Poisey. Why are you breathing so heavy? You ain't got a whore there, does ya? How many times I gotta tell you, fatty? You the only whore for me. So, what's with the breathing? You ain't having another heart attack, is ya? Nah, some son of a bitch glued my fucking head to the kitchen table. I had to bust it off with an axe. <laughs> yeah, yuck it up, you big tubby shit. What the hell do you want, anyway? Listen, Poisey, I know what you done to me. Well, I married you, didn't I? Besides, how many times we gotta go over this? I don't care how drunk you was, it was consensual. Not that! You busting into the welfare office, stealing a car and framing me! Welfare office? Car? Shitting on a desk? Why, I don't know what you're talking about. Then how'd you know about taking a dump on the desk? Yeah, well, good luck proving it. Oh, I can prove it all right, along with a lot of other things. Remember that videotape you made? You said you destroyed that. I was gonna, but then I got to thinking it might come in handy someday. So here's the deal. I'll take the rap for you if you give me $5,000. Five grand? What are you, a fucking moron? I ain't got no five grand. Well, how much you got? Four grand and change. But that's my drinking money for the week. Not no more. Visiting hours start at 4 o'clock. I better see your fat ass down here, stuffed with a Ziploc bag full of money when I walk into the visiting room, or I'm spilling the beans. Listen, I forgot to tell you, a lot of the money is coins from that vending machine I ripped off, so they may have to make two trips. Principal who? Are you sure you got the right number? My boy don't never go to school. Fine, I'm on my way. Fuck, I hate being a father. Who the fuck are all you people? Sit down and be quiet, Mr. Spencer. 
These are the Milligans, June and Darren, and their two sons, Billy and Darrell. Pleasure's mine. You want to step it up a bit? I got an ass full of money and another meeting to go to. I thought we had rid ourselves of the problem that is Kevin Spencer, but apparently I was wrong. Despite the fact that your son is still under a three-year suspension, he decided, for reasons unknown, to show up here today and let me tell you he has been nothing short of a major disruption for all concerned. Specifically, he physically assaulted Billy here and took his lunch. He then proceeded to vandalize the cafeteria and he threatened to kill some of the other students along with Billy's older brother, Daryl. Well, boys will be boys. That's all you've got to say? No, you didn't let me finish. I was also going to tell you to blow me. <laughs> Mr. Spencer, I absolutely will not tolerate that kind of language in my office. Then why don't we take it outside? Oh my god. No wonder Kevin has so many behavioral problems. Yeah, you're just lucky it's old lady than a joint. Otherwise, it would have been her coming down here and you pack of fucking losers wouldn't have stood a chance. Come on, boy, we ain't got to sit here and listen to this arsehole. Banned for life. That's what your son is. Banned for life. Gee, no school for you, Kevin. Whatever are you going to do to fill the time? <laughs> <laughs> you ever want to know what it's like to tear one off with a real man? Give me a call. And you ain't got to worry none about getting pregnant. I drank so much over the last few years, I'm sterile. Now see you around, broken head. I gotta go get some bride money to your old lady so that I don't go back to the joint. Kevin told his dad to say hi to mom for him and decided to head back home. He'd had a pretty busy day at school and he was pretty tired. What the Christ is going on? Hey, Boise, did you miss me? This ain't what it looked like. It looks like you're contributing to the delinquency of a minor, violating several conditions of your parole, and engaged in the solicitation of prostitution. Okay, so it is what it looks like. Big fucking deal. Not half as big as you breaking into the welfare office. You set me up, you fat whore. That's right, asshole. That 4,000 bucks is what paid for it, too. You ain't heard the last of this. Fuck you. Listen, Kevin, Daddy's gonna be in jail for a while and I'm going out drinking, so, uh, just keep doing whatever the fuck it is you do. Something's wrong with that kid. Vengeance is mine, saith Billy Milligan. <laughs> <laughs>